people here have run Amazon ads before? Good. And how many people have never run an Amazon ad before? Fantastic. And how many people feel like we've got a good grasp on what Amazon ads can do? And how many of you feel that you have a mastery of Amazon ads? I'm going to raise my hand on that one. All right, my name is Felicia. Um, some of you might know me, some of you might not. I've been enjoying books for a very long time. And Craig asked me to talk about Amazon ads. I'm an author, but I also run marketing for various clients. And I've done a lot of 5,000 word, 7,000 word posts, or multiple comments, because I'm talkative. And through that, people are like, oh, Maybe she actually knows what she's talking about. Or maybe you have a fiction author. You can go your way. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is the very most important thing when it comes to anything with Amazon and selling books. And that's relevancy. Now, Chris Fox has been talking about that since, I don't know, 2016? Maybe 2017? So if you want to know more about that, his presentation is over in Sam's library now. That's where I would be right now. Um, so relevancy and Amazon, Amazon's goal is to show the person who's on Amazon what they want, even if they don't know what they want. And they use an algorithm for that, which we we'll probably all love to hate. But as long as we know what's relevant to our books, we can train Amazon about what's relevant. Because they also, they have their own perceived relevance of their book. Everything you've done, all the traffic you've directed, all the Amazon ads you've run, bargain books you've booked book, book, it's all training Amazon to be like, hey, this book is attractive to this customer, but not attractive to this customer. And sometimes, it's the wrong customer you're attracting, and you're driving away the right customer. The number one thing I see wrong with people's Amazon ads, and I've seen this in 99 percent of the cases, they've been targeting the wrong things. And Amazon is confused. And so they're asking work. They either have to bid extremely high to get impressions, and even then, they're not getting impressions. They're not spending money, they're not getting conversions. So by starting with relevant targeting, you tend to have a higher CTR, which means you can bid lower for less impressions. You get the same or more clicks as someone else bidding higher. You have higher conversions, so you can bid higher and still make a great profit. You won't spend too much time managing your ads because they're working. And if, like I was talking about, it helps the Amazon algorithm. So what is relevancy? Relevancy is your series, your book, what you're advertising, and even in some cases, your author name, in comparison to whatever you're targeting. Now, this doesn't have to necessarily be a series or an author. It can be a general keyword like book. <laughs> now, a lot of people don't like the keyword book, but it can be a great keyword if Amazon knows who your targets are, because they'll just do it for you. But if Amazon doesn't know what your targets are, you get some interesting books. Now, your previous sales, your previous ad performance, and especially your metadata will determine what Amazon thinks is relevant. So, really nailing your metadata is one of those things that anyone can do. And I, I do um, talk about this sometimes, but if you have a chance, Dave Chesson, for people who are is very great at this metadata with categories and keywords. I suggest starting with him. Now, how do we find relevant targets? You know that also bots up there. I mean, that's commonplace. The problem with also bots, and there's quite a few, is depending on how you sell yourself, we'll kind of determine if your also bots are appropriate or not. If you sell lots and lots of books, well, your also bots are going to reflect probably the other books in your genre that are also selling. However, if you don't sell a lot of books, your ultra bots are going to have those same people on it, because they do sell a lot of books. 
And sometimes you're going to get posts on your also thoughts that are not necessarily your right audience. Say, you write accounting. Would you write YA accounting? We all multiple love interests. But accounting or harem is extremely popular. So you'll have a whole bunch of that on your also thoughts. But some people read both. If you write dark, gritty, urban fantasy with a male POV, you probably don't revert, want reverse harem. On your also thoughts. But you probably have one. Another way to find development targets is category ads. And the better you have trained at Amazon, the better they will target with category ads. And we'll talk about those a little bit more later. There's Google, which I honestly don't use. And there's something I call aggregation, which takes all of your um, Amazon ad data that you get using the search term report that Amazon provides and looking at where you've been getting clicks and sales and impressions based on that search term report. I'm right now, I'm going to say right now, a true aggregation is by secret sauce. Never heard anyone else talk about that. Usually the thing is, well, there's not enough data. How can you make good decisions if you don't have enough data? Well, an aggregation takes all of the data for an author and a series and adds those numbers together. So if you're, let's say, targeting a specific author, but you're also targeting each book in their series, and their series, and you're targeting the ASIM, and you're targeting the keywords, and you're doing category ads, and an auto ad. You could have 10, 11, 12 different entries for that series. And in one ad, it could be doing great. Curvers rate of one in four. And another ad, it could be doing crap. But if you aggregate those together and combine them, you get a better idea of where your targeting is actually working. I'm not going to go too much into detail on that right now. Now, this is where I see everybody making mistakes, basically, including me, as with keywords. Amazon lets us download something called a search term report in our reports page. Sorry. When you download it, what it does is it shows you exactly what the customer searched or the product page that they got the click on or you got the click on. And there's, I would say, two different kinds of keyword targeting. There's non-specific targeting, and there's specific targeting. A specific would be an author or a series or a book. Non-specific would be your genre, um, your niche, the tone of your book, your protagonist, your themes. And as an aside, usually with keywords, I find that the non-specific targeting is better. It's easier to scale, but it needs to be monitored. The specific targeting, you can also use ASINs, so you know exactly who you're targeting. Which you see in a minute why that's a good thing. So, what are some of the problems with keywords? Well, keywords and search terms are two completely different things. Sometimes you're using keyword, you think you're targeting one thing, and you're not. Another thing is you don't have to like repeat yourself over and over in your keywords. Whether that means using the same keyword with different phrase matches, like broad, phrase, or that, or different variations of the same keyword, like urban fantasy, urban fantasy romance, urban fantasy mystery, urban fantasy thriller. See how urban fantasy keeps getting more <laughs> So this is keywords versus search terms, and I don't really come out with that. <laughs> This is the search terms for Platoon F, the big ass bundle, by John P. Lawson. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and known as the big ass one of those words, Rear Links Guy. And I would just say as an aside, if you don't have Rear Links, get Rear Links. I could not do my job in the time I do it without Rear Links. That's it. What is that? Rear Links. Rear Links. Go we'll talk to John and Mr. Big Ass at some point. It's like a subscription-based um, software on a website. It can replace book report, basically. So you can see his actual keyword was big ass. <coughs> Obviously suggested by Amazon. And 
And yet, none of those, I'm guessing, are actually good targets. <laughs> well, maybe. Who knows? I think um, a couple of those did have sales. <laughs> Another thing, this is huge, is when you use a keyword for a series or a book title, and there are multiple of them. And there's no way for you or even Amazon to know what they're actually looking for. As you can see, those are three very different genres. And this is very, very common. So I would suggest looking up your keywords before you use them in the ads campaign. But that way you know where your keywords and where your ads could be showing, and you can make adjustments before you're spending money. And here's the, you don't have to repeat yourself. Um, <laughs> So as you can see, one of them is dominating when it comes to impressions. Uh, you see American Gods as a phrase, and it's got 40,000 impressions. But American Gods book only has 316. If there was no American Gods book, that 316 impressions would have been with American Gods. And then we have Annabelle Chase as a phrase and a sat. Now the bits are off because I had adjusted this ad before taking the screenshot. But as you can see, there's a drastic difference between the amount of impressions, the amount of clicks, and even the sales. And that's because of um, the way Amazon looks at your keywords. So even though Annabelle Chase is exact, means that they would have to search that or are these the seven key slots inside your metadata? No, this is on an Amazon app. Right, but is the text here what you're using to test to see what you put inside your, your keyboard inside your book? No, no. You wouldn't be able to use these. Can you the questions so we can hear them? I'm asking if these are the, search, the seven search terms inside your metadata in the book. No, no, because you can't use um, alpha names right. for both sites. So this is just an Amazon app. Here's question. And this is the example of urban fantasy. Of the 75,000 impressions, 72,000 of them were just on urban fantasy as a phrase. And if I looked at my search term report, all of these words like demon urban fantasy, urban fantasy books, they were on my search term report, but under urban fantasy. And why is that important? Why it doesn't matter? And that's relevancy. The more relevant your keyword is, the cheaper you can get in shots, the more often you'll be shown. Bidding is not a whoever bids more wins. It is a whoever is relevant against whoever else is relevant based on a percentage of relevance and then bids. Plus, probably something way more complicated than I can understand. Now, getting away from keywords. There's category targeting. So this be a little confusing. With category targeting, you're targeting a specific category on Amazon. And any of the books or products in that category can show your ad. So if you do something like Urban Fantasy, yeah, I advertise Urban Fantasy a lot. It will be, your ad will show on anything in Urban Fantasy as a category, as a book. Because we cannot in the US, on Amazon ads, we cannot target people categories. You can in the UK. So what that means is that depending on what you're bidding and depending on what you're relevant for, Amazon will automatically show your ad to something in that category. This can be interesting because people miscategorize. Or you're going to be seeing a lot of trap posts especially in book categories that are not popular with indie authors. And even if a Kindle category is very popular with an indie author, they might not be in that book category. For example, in action adventure fantasy, if you look at Kindle, it's dominated by Michael Amberley. In the book category, it's dominated by Brandon Sanderson. I don't think a lot of people who are writing 
and or who like urban fantasy, or any like Raymond Sanderson, and vice versa. So you want to check the category before you put your book ad in it. So make sure you're not targeting a terrible category for you. Now one thing about the search term report is you can look and see exactly which ASINs are connected to where you got your clicks. And this is where you can find new targeting, like the low hanging fruit. Instead of doing like an auto ad or targeting everything you can think of, it saves you time too, because you don't have to go and dig for those low comp uh, books. Um, a little tip on that is you can negative target ASINs in your category of product target in the ads. This means that if you're finding Amazon is showing you in the wrong places, you can negative target that, it will stop showing you there. Amazon will also, because it considers your relevancy, will start showing you the right books in that category rather than the wrong ones. They're also a lot easier to scale. And the higher you're bidding on a category, the more competitive you're going to be showing in that category. So you could use it in one of two ways. You could use it to get that low hanging fruit by bidding really low, or you can aim a little bit higher and hit some of those higher competition targets without having to worry about your keywords messing everything up. For ASIN targeting, you choose the ASIN you want to show up for. And this includes with searches. So if someone is searching a specific book, you might pop up on that. I do find that, find that with searching, keywords tend to work better. But this lets you target very specific products instead of a keyword that could show anywhere. So if you have an author you're targeting, but they write a lot of different kinds of books, a lot of different kinds of niches, or you only do well with one of their series and you're terrible with another, you can target just that series without targeting them as a keyword. This also lets you target new releases. And what's nice about new releases is, the more you're on Amazon and you look for them, a lot of people know about it at first. And if you have, if you're targeting a new release that nobody really knows about, and you're getting your bids low, and you're getting a lot of action on that, Amazon will keep showing you on that target even when it gets competitive. Like when it hits number three in the store, and everybody's targeting it, and you're getting 20 cent clicks, or two cent clicks. You can also target paperbacks specifically, and you can target audiobooks. Because we can't actually advertise our audiobooks on Amazon, this is a nice bypass. If you have audiobooks connected to your ebook, you can advertise your ebook on different audiobooks and drive audiobook sales. This can be a little more expensive than keywords, simply because you might be hitting a higher comp target. So if you're, say, using Jim Butcher as a keyword, but you really want some action on Peace Talks, the new book that's not going up yet, well, when it comes out, you can target the ASIM and target Jim Butcher and target Peace Talks. You might be doing lots of impressions for lower click, C, for lower CPC with Jim Butcher, but you could be showing them any of his books. Or you'd be paying more for Peace Talks specifically, and then be paying a little bit more to be that's what you're competing for. So why should you train Amazon? Well, I think I've gone over this a few times, but it makes the targeting so much easier. It gives your ad itself higher relevancy, which means you're not going to be making, you're making ads that aren't working. Your ads are less likely to die, and they're easy to resurrect once they have died. And this is the big one. This is why people um, do really, really well when they release. They train Amazon who their targeting is based on Amazon ads or Facebook ads or even book of ads. And then Amazon pays over. And they start recommending the book to other people who are buying 
could look be returning. And so this will be on your Ultabots, or their Ultabots. Since Ultabot went to secure a lot, there's a engine in the background where Amazon is recommending your book, and you don't even know it. And that's how you stay in the top 100, top 1,000, top 2,000 in the store, and spend 20 bucks a day. So how do you do that? Well, there's launching with micro-targeting, which means being very specific in your targeting and not, not allowing a lot of broad targeting to mess up the perception of your relevancy. You can also use it to control where you're being shown. This happens a lot when you are being shown in wrong places. For, for example, if every search term you have has reverse hero in it, but you write, pretty you left, tough guy, or fancy. You can also negative target, even in keywords. And it just gave us the ability to negative target in auto ads, which is awesome. With negative targeting, you can make sure you're not popping up on reverse hero. And that includes books that have reverse hero in the title when you're going to a product page. Yeah, I got this slides in time. So I can um, answer questions now. Uh, there should be a microphone. Yeah, if you can line up over here and just try not to cross in front of the camera to those things. Hi, thank you for doing this. I have a question. I have one series that's doing great, another series that just launched, not doing as great as I expected the first series to be doing. When I was learning about keywords, I was taught you have up to 1,000, 2,000, use as many as you can. So I have a whole bunch of keywords on this app. And it seems like the only keywords that are really sticking are like reverse hair, um, not even the cabinet is sticking, and it's in the cabinet reverse hair. So are you telling me just to shut down all those other keywords and just focus on what really is selling? Um, yes. Uh, the, there's not a necessarily a bad thing to be targeting a bunch of stuff, but your ad isn't going to be showing on all of that stuff. And you want a good CTR on your ad as a whole. So if you have a lot of targeting that has that's very generic, like reverse arrow, your CTR on that may or may not be high or low, but your conversions are probably lower because there's so much kind of reverse camera out there. You'll also show up in any book that has reverse camera in its title or subtitle. Just there's a lot of that. So what I do for most of my genre keywords is I micro-target it down as low as I can. So for you, I, is it a contemporary or a paranormal? It's a fantasy reverse so fancy return academy broad targeting is what I would be focused on. And then I would be looking at your search term report to see where you're actually showing up. Oh, thank you. Go. Oh, can I have you ask a question? Uh, you can come up here and get a pen. This is only for the first five people, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I actually have two questions. Sure. Um, for the micro targeting, how many keywords are you are you talking about? Um, this is a common question, and the answer is it depends. <laughs> it depends on your book and how much relevant targets are for your book. So for something like the Five Minute Reverse Harem, you probably have thousands of targets you can target. But if you're writing... Then that would be thousands of micro-targeting? Um, if they're relevant to your book. Uh, this can be very difficult to know if you don't read heavily in your genre. Then you have to judge based on the description, the cover, um, maybe the reviews to see if you think they're a good match. And this is where testing comes in. Sometimes you're going to be testing a lot. And then you just really focus and put more money into the ones that are doing well. What would be the lowest you would do? One. Okay. All right. <laughs> I got to probably a genre of one, like, fantasy reverse parent economy. Okay. And the other question is, can you give us an example of what the negative target might look like? Because I can't picture that. Okay, so let's say you're writing um, a category reverse harem. Fantasy. You probably want to negative target things like contemporary, or bully, or MM, or lit RPG, or gameplay. And yes, I use all those as negative targets. 
You probably don't want to negative target yourself unless you're running ads specifically for your brand name. Because you're fighting for visibility on Amazon. And if you're not targeting yourself, I probably am. And so that's why you would negative target the things you don't want to show up on. And that's with keywords or category ads you can do um, in science. Okay. Nice. All right. Thanks. You can get a pen too. I realize I should have gotten pens. Um, question for those of with series. Do you recommend also promoting on Amazon the subsequent books? And if so, would you put those in the same ads as book one, or would you treat those differently? So Amazon has now given us the ability that advanced or like you guys can go like that. And that's to target multiple books in one app. Now you have to do a standard ad without a copy to do so. And yes, I advertise all the books in the series. Whether I'm going to advertise book one with that, I'm testing. What you want to make sure is that your impressions are not being spread out across your series if you're really trying to push book one. Plus, if you're running a ad with multiple books in it, it's going to track if someone's going to be buying the next book in the series as a conversion, as an order, as a sale. But that isn't necessarily someone else who could be at. So don't mess with conversion rate a little bit. So it's really up to you, and I would test. Um, like for a category ad, I would probably target everything. Uh, for a very specific kind of, I want to be seen as many places as once, and I'm pushing my book one, I would push the one. Thank you. I'm going to get I'm starting a new series in Thriller, but my old series is Humorous Mystery. And I was wondering, I, I've been trying to train the bot, no. and I didn't tell my client, my customers about it, until I had run some ads and Thriller-based things that I could get the Amazon bot to know who, how to target this book. But when I'm running ads, should I negative target my other books? So yes. That, okay. in that category. Um, can you give us some tips on how to make a bigger splash if it's a startup in a, in a giant category? Yes, um, there are a couple of things I would do. I would do a category ad for probably your top categories that you put your book into. Um, making sure that the books in that category fit yours. The thriller you're probably going to be good. Most people don't miscategorize like romance in the thriller. Um, I would also do a keyword ad on some of your top um, genre keywords. So thriller plus the more specific subgenre and niche. Maybe you have a female protagonist versus a male protagonist, or either way. If there's a romantic subplot, if there's not. Now I'm definitely do negative targeting on things. And if your thriller is less funny than your humorous mystery, things like comedy, humor, humorous, funny, of a negative target. And then I also run, um, or I would look to the new releases, the hot new releases um, list for your categories, and start targeting those. Pre orders are great to target because other people don't do it. And that'll allow you to start getting relevancy with those targeting. How do you find the pre orders? If they're in the new releases section. Keywords across those ads. Am I sort of competing against myself? Then, let's say I'm having my own name. Am I? Should I not be doing it? You're not competing against yourself in regards to CPC and bidding. What Amazon will do is it will decide between the ads using that keyword or target which one is more relevant on an ad, and it will show that one. Usually, that'll mean if you're bidding higher, that ad's going to show. Not because you're raising the bid, but because you're more competitive and being placed better. But if you're an ad that you've been running for a long time with a lower bid, 
has a lot of clicks and a high click-through rate and a high conversion rate, that element is showing over here in the ad. So it's really something you want to keep checking. I tend to not want to cross over too much, but I'm also kind of lazy and don't want to go through all my other ads to see if I'm done with them. Thank you. You get my last time. It's my king. I know. <laughs> I'm wondering now, now that we can advertise, yay, best thing that ever happened. Um, if there's things that we traditionally used to do when we were launching books, when we were setting up metadata, that maybe now we shouldn't do, um, because yeah. we've got... Yeah. 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 Speaking of the mic, can you... Oh, closer to the mic. Yeah. What should we do now, differently, uh, to how we used to publish, uh, now that we can advertise? You mean with metadata? Yeah, with metadata. Um, with metadata, a lot of the same tactics are, are going to work. Uh, when it comes to categories, you want to up your relevancy with your primary targets. So if you are a very good match for, let's say, KF Bree, what you want to do is you want to find what, type, what categories she's using and use those. Because that will increase your relevancy with her. And if she's you know, good at targeting, then I mean she's brilliant, so she's probably a good target then you're also going to be more relevant in those categories as well. With keywords, I still pretty much um, recommend what Dave Chesson does. And I don't want to go through everything he does, but um, when it comes to your like big, prime, these are my power keywords like fantasy, reverse, parent, and academy, which is a great keyword. I would use that as, as its own in the seven boxes. And then you can, you can quote unquote, stuff a little bit more keywords in the other boxes. But the more focused your keyword is in your KDP box, the higher relevance you're going to have for that specific string. Same if you use a subtitle. And your title and your series title increase your relevancy really high. That's why you see a lot of um, titles that have the same words in them. There's a lot of fay out there. Thank you. Go on. Hello. Um, I guess I was a little bit confused, and it's probably because I just I didn't quite grasp some, some things. I just want to, so I just want to make sure that I grasp this one concept properly. Because you mentioned earlier about um, limiting, or you put an example up there where they, they had two keywords, and then they had a third one that added an extra word and had 316 hits, and they said that if they just made two words, those 316 would have gone into there. But then doesn't that go against um, focusing your keywords down to more relevancy? See, the thing with, um, with relevancy is a lot of it depends on your relevancy inside the app as well. So urban fantasy is such a broad target, you're going to get a lot of action on it. Which means you're probably going to get a lot of clicks and hopefully conversions. So when, when someone searches urban fantasy sexy books, you're competing for you know, urban fantasy books or just urban fantasy. And if your urban fantasy has a lot more relevance throughout the ad than urban fantasy books, it's going to show that. So what you see is when you start now, you might be getting back 316 impressions on urban fantasy books, but as the ad progresses, urban fantasy dominates. And so that's why you're kind of spreading out your relevance. Thank these are some beginning questions. Um, is it better to do a whole lot of ads with one, just one keyword or group of related keywords, or to put a whole bunch of things in one ad? Well, I tend to try not to run too many ads because it's a lot of work, but I also try to keep ads focused on like a theme. And so when I'm testing, I test specific kinds of what I looked up. So if I'm using also bots, I use something called synergistic also bots. And so I have an ad about synergistic keywords and synergistic ASINs. Amazon is also now going to have something called ad groups. And this allows us to control all the ads that are similar in one campaign. And you can do keywords and ASINs in that same um, ad group, or in the same ad, but in a different ad group. Because right now you can't do target keywords and ASINs and categories in the same ad. And so what I would do is I really would focus 
you're testing on things that are the most relevant, and then expand, especially as you're beginning. All right, uh, just two more questions. Sure. Um, how long do you keep ads running? You know, they, she said today, four to six weeks. Um, and is it true that some ads die or they never really go live? And what's a good um, conversion rate? What do you say is a good conversion rate? Uh, how long should they run for? Forever. Okay. Okay. Now, sometimes ads are going to lower in relevancy, depending on what you're targeting, because perhaps those authors or series aren't doing as well as they were before. Or, you know, just because of the natural churn. Um, but I, I've had ads that have been running for like two years. Um, what you'll see is sometimes ads don't start, and that can be because of relevancy. Um, especially Amazon's perceived relevancy. You could have trained Amazon to be showing your ads to specific things, and the keywords you're using aren't relevant. There's a way around that. Um, I don't suggest it for, for beginners because you could spend a lot of money. Uh, your conversion rate, your... Oh, conversion rate. Um, a lot of that depends on your percentage of full reads to sales. If you have a book in certain genres where you're getting four full reads, which means you're getting more than four borrows to every sale, having you know a conversion rate of one in 30, one in 40, it could be very, very uh, high conversion when you include those borrows and page reads. If you're like wide and you're not in Kingdom Limited, I would say a conversion rate of one in three, one in five would be stronger. If you're free, <laughs> thanks so much. My question is a bit related insofar as how do you scale ads? If you have a successful ad, is it great to repeat the same ad? Should I just throw a lot of money at that ad? How does it, what's the best way to grow that? Um, I would not repeat the ad because I'm competing against the two ads. Um, it depends on your target. Uh, one thing, a lot of things have a targeting cap. It's a visibility cap. And if you're using something very general, like your genre, well, you're probably going to be able to raise that pretty high. But you start to get an issue with the too broad, like if you're using urban fantasy. Well, there's a lot of urban fantasy out there. And probably only a small part of it is relevant. So you can scale that ad really high, but then you start to be targeting your own targets. Um, so when it comes to scaling, some of it is just adding new, you know, ASINs or new keywords based on new releases. There's also raising the category ad big. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is you can scale down. If you're finding your ads are actually spending their daily budget, lower the bids. You'll still get impressions and clicks and all of that. And as a keyword or target becomes more relevant, higher CTR, higher conversions, you can start blowing that bid and getting the same amount of clicks for less. And that lets you focus on increasing your bids or making your ads. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I have a question about marketing to your MN audience. Um, I have a friend. Closer to the mic. Sorry, I have a question about marketing in the MM subgenre. Um, I think it's not very tricky just because of the way people flag keywords, like for example, you can even advertise the word gay um, and stuff like that. I don't know about some Amazon, but she's kind of helped a lot on Facebook. And I was just wondering if you could speak to that or if you have any strategies for kind of moving in that space. Okay, so I do a lot of advertising for reverse harem, which is like not something Amazon really likes. And so there are little things that you can do. Now, when it comes to the keywords you're targeting, I've never had an ad be rejected based on the keyword I'm using. And you use some really nasty keywords. <laughs> and you know it. It's they look at your title, your subtitle, your blurb, and all that. So you kind of have to be tripsy, where you want to make sure that the reader knows what they're getting without triggering Amazon's bots to be like, oh, that's a no. Go no. So with, with Facebook, um, is she finding difficulty with her app copy? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've worked around it, so now we just like, you know, like Yowie is fine, but gay isn't. And so there's sort of those things. And I was wondering if there are similar sort of pitfalls in Amazon that you found at all in that space or if you have any particular choices. Um, you just want to be careful with your ad copy. 
And what's nice is you don't have to use ad copy at all anymore. You can just use a standard ad. Uh, if your cover is very strong and it conveys what the genre is in the tone, you really don't need ad copy. Because it's your copy like some or getting the clicks. Um, I would mostly just be careful with your ad copy and making sure your title and subtitle are um, con within the rules of their uh, content. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, thank you. I, I had some uh, more meta questions, I think. How, how many hours a week do you spend working on ads as opposed to writing? What would you say about that ratio? Also, for someone who is still working a day job, what would their ratio be to be writing to do this? Well, um, this is my day job. And how much I spend per client is going to be a drastically different than what everybody's spending for themselves. And a lot of that will have to do with how many books you have, how many series. And I do recommend if you have less time to focus. Focus on what's um, going to make you more money. And it's not as simple as but selling. But that's all another formula. Um, I would say in when you're starting, you're going to be spending more time. And a lot of it is, is determined by how much research you're doing going into it. Um, if you have a very niche book, you're probably going to spend less time researching. And so you can do it faster. As for writing, yeah. Don't, don't be me. I haven't written in so long. So you, want, you kind of want to find that balance. Thank you. Back to the reverse serum and advertising. Mm -hmm. um, so once you um, get unapproved, or once they send you that, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't run this, it's very difficult then I, to know what to even change to get that. So, do you have any advice? Just free, so that I have made no changes to my and I'm just like, oh, okay, now it's okay. Um, not using ad copy anymore is really helpful, especially for reverse serum. Especially if your um, book cover kind of says the book cover. That yeah. a lot of times they'll, they'll um, say, no, you can't do this because of the book cover. Mm -hmm. So then I change the book cover. Yes. Yeah, they kind of have a bias against Manchester. And if you do lock screen ads, you cannot get Manchester covers to approve. It's right. completely against their rules. In with regular ads, you just keep resubmitting. Now, sometimes they will suspend your ad later. And they won't tell you. Yeah, that's always fun. Right. Yeah, that's always fun. It's it's just one of those balance things. Okay. Um, if you can use feathers without manchest, that can usually help right. with getting rejected. I've never had an ad perpetually rejected with reverse error. Okay. All right. Thank you. Stephanie Hey, uh, Brian Cohen, so I'm going to show news. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was going to tell yeah. you, but you know, if you want to get yourself. Yeah. You, you learn, <laughs> and you just have that in. So, obviously there's a lot here. There's a lot of tips, a lot of tricks, all really great, thank you for doing it. What is the first thing you recommend? People go home, they say, Felicia's the bomb, I want to start. What is the first thing they should do to go on this journey? Purchase Reelings. Because if you purchase three links and upload your um, 90 day report, if something in their uh, report section that I helped create, that'll give you your sub for a read through, it'll give you your estimated future revenue based on your historical sub for a read through, and if you know your conversion rate, they'll tell you what to bid. And then you go on Amazon and you look for your relevant targets. And sometimes that's just looking through your also bots, looking through other also bots. If you've been writing ads, there's, you can do an animation, you can look through your search reports to see where you're targeting well and where you're not. But if you're brand new, I would run an auto ad to see where Amazon is seeing where you're relevant. And then I would run category ads to see where Amazon sees you're relevant. And then one keyword ad that has your more, you know, general keywords that are very relevant to your genre. Sorry, that was like five things. <laughs> number one, purchase reelings. Purchase reelings. <laughs> and no one number affiliate, but John does, you know, pay me with advice. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we're done. Thank you.